Well, in a bid to increase the foreign investment drive, we've been seeing the vice president making quite a number of trips outside of the country in recent times. Uh, the latest was to Vietnam. He, went, he met with the prime minister, the vice president, and also the president of Vietnam. Uh, what are some of the outcomes of those visits? This morning, we're being joined by Mr. Lao Lua Conde, who is senior special assistant to the president in the office of the vice president uh, on media and publicity. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily this morning. Good morning. Good to see you again. Good to see you as well. I saw that you were also on that trip in some of the pictures that were released. Um, how was the trip to Vietnam? Well, um, it turns out uh, very, uh, very fruitful discussions were held uh, uh, between uh, our Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo and uh, his counterpart in Vietnam. Uh, but not only uh, did he meet with the Vice President of Vietnam, Socialist Republic of Vietnam uh, also had meetings with the Prime Minister uh, uh, in that country and eventually uh, also met with the President, uh, President Park. Of, uh, of Vietnam, and uh, all of those meetings turned out very, very well in terms of how uh, they, 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 they see Nigeria and, and, and what we have seen and they have also seen is possible uh, in terms of enlarging the relationship and deepening the ties. Uh, I would say this was a very, very uh, uh, successful uh, visit. What are some of the outcomes which we're actually hoping to get? I mean, when we're talking about relationships these days. Uh, there have been talks around ho how Nigeria needs to socialize more. African countries need to bond together more. We know about our traditional relationships with, uh, say, the United Kingdom and even, even the U.S. As far, as, as far away as it is. We've seen a budding relationship with China and the investment of uh, the, the Chinese government in Nigeria through some of its infrastructure uh, let's say project deliveries. But when you now look more at the Southeast Asian countries, what precisely are we hoping to sell to them and what are we hoping to benefit from them? Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, the, the, the whole idea is to uh, present Nigeria uh, even to, to, to the South East, uh, Southeast Asian uh, region as a veritable destination uh, for investment, you know, uh, try to quicken to bring that realization. I mean, it's not that uh, it's not they are not aware, but try to understand to, to to show that look, the opportunities are are, are widening. The opportunities are quite uh, very attractive. Uh, in, in by 2050, Nigeria will become the the, the third. Uh, largest population in the world, you know, which uh, says that we're going to have the biggest, you know, the third biggest uh, uh, market. Uh, you know, talking about the AFCTA, the African Free Trade uh, Agreement, which is already in force, you know, that opens up the African continent uh, uh, being the largest free zone anywhere in the world, 1.3 billion people. Nigeria plays a very critical role in that, you know, so that uh, uh, foreign investors can come in and use Nigeria as a staging point to reach other countries in the in, in, in the continent, not just because Nigeria is geographically located in a place where it is easily accessible in the continent, but also because Nigeria has very uh, 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 close ties with other African countries, uh, be it through ECOWAS, where of course Nigeria plays a very leading role, or even in HEIU. So, so it makes sense for uh, uh, a southeastern uh, uh, economic like like Vietnam trying to take advantage of the African uh, free trade zone uh, uh, arrangement to use Nigeria as a staging post. You know, because if you are in Nigeria, uh, you not only do you have access to our, you know, uh, you know about two hundred seventy million. Uh, uh, population, but, but, but also you have access to the entire African continent, you know, about 1.3 billion people, you know, so it increases the opportunity. So the point is that uh, the vice president has made the point of duty to try and show to the world, you know, and in this case in Vietnam, uh, that look, Nigeria is your best place to invest in the continent. And as a matter of fact, by 2050, it will be the, the third largest. And I think it's getting very good uh, Responses, you know, uh, and like we, like I said, when he went to, uh, to to Vietnam, as a matter of fact, when the, the visit was being planned, when the president of Vietnam heard that he was coming, the, the, the president of Vietnam had to actually change his schedule. He was doing a tour around the country because they also realize and understand the very important position of Nigeria. 
What areas of comparative advantage are we looking that are we hoping that they would look at? Okay, so so specifically uh, Vietnam, um, they, they they have some uh, uh, some comparative advantage in the area of agri business, you know, agricultural processing. So so the vice president went to their uh, the call it the Vietnam Academy of Agricultural Sciences, you know, where they uh, they do a lot of seedling uh, enhancement, you know, quite a lot of uh, 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 agricultural economics to try and see how to boost their own economy through agri. And one of the things that we, uh, that we found out was that uh, they, were, they, they were one of the largest uh, exporters of, uh, of rice and a lot of uh, processing. So we are, we are trying to see how we can work with them in that area. Nigeria is also very big in, in agriculture. Agriculture has the, uh, the, high, the largest uh, uh, number in terms of population, I mean, sorry, uh, job employment. And, and, and uh, yeah, so, so, so we, we, we felt that, you know, there's a way in which we can collaborate, we can get some of the things that they have, uh, uh, they have learned that, that, that they are doing, especially in the area of uh, uh, processing, possibly, you know, get uh, uh, a cashew processing uh, factory here in Nigeria run, you know, by uh, Vietnamese business people who are already advanced in this, they understand how this thing, this, this thing is done. They get the market here in Nigeria, they get the market in Africa, and they enlarge their business. And we also have the opportunity of having the businesses here. You know, we can uh, create more jobs for our people. And, you know, on and on it goes. Mm. Interesting uh, strategy. Uh, it's a good thing that you mentioned the fact that Vietnam was also a large exporter of rice. Yeah. Uh, and I'm wondering whether that had anything to, whether that put a, a strain on our relationship with them in the past, looking at how we were looking to, you know, at least reduce significantly the amount of rice we were importing uh, from the South Asian countries. Uh, I do not know. Now that we're looking at the area of agribusiness, will they really be seeing an area where they can, I mean, because what they're looking for, as you mentioned, is a market for their produce, something that will keep their own people employed as well um, and, uh, you know, ensure that they also earn some foreign exchange. What, would I say, what advantage will we be offering them if we say, okay, come to our country and do business? You know, how is that going to profit their own people? Well, you know, don't, don't forget that we're, we're talking about business. It's, it's a very large uh, 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 space is you know the, the the opportunities are endless. So yes, you know uh, they, they, they I think they, they produce about forty two million tons of rice uh, per year, which is a huge, you know. Uh, and we are saying that look, there are all, all kinds of ways in which we can relate. You know, uh, they have people in that area, you know, who have developed the business who also need to expand their businesses. So, so if they come to Nigeria uh, and start, for instance, uh, like I said, a cashew processing uh, factory, they get the opportunity of uh, you know, being able to remit all of their investment capital and profit 100% unconditionally. They get all kinds of tax uh, credit and duty uh, uh, incentives. You know, uh, so, 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 so they're also making money and they're making foreign exchange you know, for the economy. So, so the point is that there, there are always mutual benefits, you know, and it's not just a one-way uh, kind of deal. You know, there are all kinds of opportunities, all kinds of ways that we can explore deepening the economic and trade relationship. Let me flip this conversation out to my colleagues. Thank you, uh, Mark. Well, Mr. Akonde, it's uh, very, very encouraging, you know, I mean, that there's someone... We can call it chief marketing officer for the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the person of the vice president, you know, and the human job being done, you know, cannot be remonstrated. However, um, looking at the business environment, the, um, the work of PEBEC definitely isn't something that one can uh, push over or push aside. But then it doesn't still, uh, there are many businessmen, women, business communities, organized private sector, we still have a lot of questions around the business climate in the country, even as at the moment. So one wonders if there are going to be separate rules for uh, other nationals coming into Nigeria compared to Nigerians, you know, who have investments are doing business in Nigeria concerning the business environment. Because if they are complaining about, you know, multiple taxes, federal and states, you know, one wonders then how 
that, how encouraging and how, how bullish that will be for them, you know, where those who are coming into the country. Um, I, I do understand that. It's uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the business environment, you know, and trying to make it uh, a thriving environment for, for, for businesses, as you know, is one important uh, uh, you know, duty, task of the Buhari administration, you know, and that was why the president had set up the, the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council uh, chaired uh, by the vice president. And uh, we've made, you know, some bit of significant uh, progress, you know, in that area. Uh, but there's still a lot more work to do. Uh, and that is why it's an ongoing, continuous, uh, continuous work. You remember that in 2018, Nigeria actually went up about 49 places in, in the ease of doing business uh, World Bank ranking. And for two years uh, uh, back to back, Nigeria was also ranked as uh, one of the top uh, one of the top ten uh, economies in the world that is that is being reformed. You know, essentially. So. So we have made uh, some impact and even, you know, uh, global agencies like the World Bank have identified that. But there's still a lot more work to do, just like you said, for instance, in the area of ensuring that businesses are not, uh, you know, dealing with the issue of uh, double taxation. And, and, and these are ongoing uh, challenges that uh, we are trying to coordinate, you know, be it at the federal level and the state level. You know, uh, this is one of the areas that NEC is continuously engaged with uh, to ensure that uh, investors, whether they are Nigerian investors or foreign investors, don't have to deal uh, with some of these problems that we can easily uh, uh, sort out. So, so, so what I would say is that we recognize these challenges and uh, we are working on it. There is a, uh, a whole uh, Pebex secretariat, you know, that, uh, that, that all they do uh, on a daily basis, you know, is to ensure that wherever we, uh, we, we identify these problems, we make efforts uh, to try and solve them. So it's an ongoing problem, uh, uh, but we are, we, are, we are dealing with it uh, almost on case-by-case -case, uh, uh, case, uh, basis. Well, perhaps you may want to speak to some of the challenges and in ways in which maybe Nigerians or some other people can intervene. For instance, uh, there is the federal government doesn't have any particular state of its own. The federal government doesn't have a local government of its own. And these businesses will operate within states and within specific local government areas. So one wonders what kind of, uh, what's the level of collaboration or perhaps pushback that is coming, you know, from the various levels. I know that the, the Pebec initiative was largely in the area of creating some examples in one or two states across the nation. How much that has spread over the, na the other states of the Federation, and may, you may want to speak to that. But what are the specific challenges, especially within the states, that business uh, investors have had to report to, to PEBEC? And how are these things being challenged, uh, being taken on, especially from the state authorities or the local government authorities? Well, you know, um, they're, 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 like I said, these are ongoing uh, situations. And to talk specifically about, you know, what is happening in the states and the local governments uh, with the federal government is, is one of the, uh, the, the good advantages or the, 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 what we get to do in NEC. So, so the National Economic Council is where uh, the federal government tries to coordinate the economy uh, with with uh, with the states, you know, and the meet on a monthly basis. Now, besides that, I mean, so so issues are sorted. How their governors can bring up issues. We have federal government agencies uh, uh, represented represented on the council. But besides that, you know uh, that one of the things that has happened in the last uh, 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 five to six years is how. Uh, this government has dealt with the issue of MSMEs, which is where a lot of those problems, you know, are, are, are seen, you know. So, so we have the MSME clinics, uh, which the vice president started, uh, I believe, sometimes in 2016, 2017, uh, where he goes to a, to, to, to a state himself, you know, bringing along uh, the, 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 uh, the, the federal government regulatory agencies that relate with the businesses 
uh, NAFDAQ, FIRS, uh, CAC, uh, Standard Organization of Nigeria, and all of them, so that we go to the states, the vice president is there, he brings all these federal agencies, the businesses come up in the state, they explain what their challenges are, and those challenges are sorted out on the spot. You know, uh, in many instances, those clinics go on for like two days and the vice president comes, you know, uh, you know, in one of those days to, to, to also be on the ground, actually interacting with the, uh, with, with the businesses. So, so, so that, that just shows you that, you know, we have a hands-on approach uh, to these things. Uh, another example is uh, if you look at what we are trying to do in the area so, Mr. of broadband Mr. connectivity. Just, just one second. You know, just before you uh, move off the S MSME that, uh, issue, my, my apologies. Just before you move on uh, off the MSME uh, issue uh, that is just raised, um, a 2020 report by the National Bureau of Statistics and Smeden indicate that regulatory pressures, difficult operating environment, and a number of other issues have seen to 1.9 million MSMEs exit the Nigerian business landscape between 2018 and 2020. Uh, I'm sure this is something that will give uh, Pebeck and the federal government some concern. Uh, what can you say to this? That, 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 that's just a reflection of, uh, of an ongoing situation, uh, which, uh, you know, makes the idea of uh, a continuous engagement uh, uh, with with uh, between between the regulatory agencies and uh, and the businesses themselves uh, to be something that makes sense and, and this is this is this is ongoing. Of course, you know uh, it's no point to deny whatever the challenges may be. The point is that there is a deliberate a deliberate plan, you know, a consistent plan, a regular plan to create the opportunities that we encourage many of the MSMEs to stay. And there are also success stories, you know, uh, by, by the way, uh, that we also try to, uh, to highlight, you know. But yes, there are challenges, you know, because there are also, uh, you know, some stack problems uh, that, that are ongoing, which we are dealing with. The point that I'm trying to make is that uh, these issues are being addressed, you know, uh, and if you look at the size of Nigeria, I mean, uh, we, we are just about 217 million people uh, and, and, and MSMEs from, you know, the, the perhaps the biggest sector in terms of engagement of the people. So you will find uh, a lot of uh, instances that you've quoted, but there are also many uh, many uh, success stories, and we are very confident that there will be more and more uh, success stories. You know, because look, the, the, the market is just compelling, and uh, the, the people are resilient, and so so government itself will be uh, you know on the toes to ensure that these issues are sorted out. It's one of the things that the vice president has made a, uh, you know, uh, a very cardinal point of his own uh, public engagement is to say that look, we need to see. And he's talking about, I mean, he's talking to, 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 to government uh, regulators that, that we as government, as government and the regulators, they must see themselves as facilitators of businesses, you know, not, uh, not trying to uh, make money out of them, uh, but to see how you can, uh, you know, uh, enlarge the space, make it easier for them to thrive. And that is how this, the, the government benefits is not by you know uh, front loading uh, the, 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 the 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 toes or the collections or try to make things difficult because it comes back to us as a people. We need to understand that all those agencies that deal with the MSMEs, you know, any agency that deals with business, you know, the point is to make sure that you facilitate the businesses. And one of the examples <clears throat> that he tries to uh, to explain is that look, your KPIs must show that uh, you are encouraging more businesses to perform. Your KPIs must show that, uh, must, must reflect the fact that businesses, MSMEs, they are making, they are, they are, they are, they are being successful. And, and, and these are some of the things that we are working around on a very 
constant uh, cost, constant basis. And well, you well know, the, su as the little success by little, of the are, the success are, of the KPIs, Mr. Yes, Konde, is also dependent on the business environment, uh, which is what I'm going to refer to. But first of all, let's look at uh, the feedback from the vice president's visit to Vietnam. And I'm reading your statement here. The VP has had a lot of marketing to do. And uh, it, it says here, according to the vice president, GDP, that's Nigeria's GDP growth, has been positive for the last seven quarters. And though it slowed to 2.3% on a year-to-year -year basis in the third quarter of this year, it was a 9 0.7% increase over the second quarter. Well, that would seem like a very good way to put it. This is how uh, the MBS captions the growth rate. The quarter two 2022 growth rate decreased by 1.4% points from 5.01% growth rate recorded in quarter two 2021 and increased by 0 0.44%. 0.44% points relative to 3.11% in quarter one, 2022. So it would seem like, you know, the VP is just trying to market the country and rightly so. But then again, even this growth rate, according to the MBS, has been recorded more in the non-oil sector, not necessarily in the other sectors where uh, we're looking to explore and exploit relations with Vietnam, shouldn't the marketing be more realistic? Because in the area of agriculture uh, has been seriously impacted by either economic policies or even you know, um, natural disasters that we've seen in the country in recent times. Um, uh, the, the flooding has affected rice farms in many parts of Nigeria. So what are your thoughts on this? How realistic is this uh, uh, plan to explore bilateral relations with Vietnam in the light of these more practical indices? You know, I, I, I think you already uh, uh, made a point. Uh, on the, the GDP figures, you will note if you compare, uh, you know, other economies, even developed economies, that, you know, our economies seem to have... Uh, rebounded, you know, bounced back quite uh, faster, you know, when you compare them to others, uh, other, or some of other bigger developed economies. But your point on, on, on the specifics on Vietnam, yeah, you know, so like I said, if you look at the area of agriculture, and not just agriculture, by the way, even technology, so, so the vice president visited the uh, the, the Vietnam Agricultural uh, Sciences uh, Institute and also visited, you know, one of the biggest uh, uh, software, you know, uh, ICT firm in the country called FTP. And uh, you know, this this is a company that was formed in 1999, and now by by next year they're going to be doing revenues up to one billion dollars. Okay. Uh, and so they are looking to Africa, you know, who are they going to partner with in Africa, you know, and, and uh, I did, you know, say very clearly that uh, they were looking uh, to, to a place where, you know, they can get quite uh, good traction. And the vice president made a very, you know, compelling case, which is the whole point, you know, of, of all this trip that look, whatever it is that the challenges are, you have a government uh, that is uh, uh, forward-looking. You have a government that is hands-on dealing with them. And then together with that, you have the biggest economy in, in Africa. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have the biggest financial market also in, in Africa. You know, uh, the capitalization of it is over $50 billion. So, so the opportunities are, are just, you know, uh, 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 endless. You know, in the area of technology specifically, uh, between 2016 and now, Nigeria has produced uh, six unicorns, you know, in fintech. You know, a unicorn uh, is, 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 a, is, a, is, a, is a tech company that is valued at $1 billion. One billion, not $1 billion, $1 billion. We have six of them uh, between 2016 or 2015 and now, you know, in spite of the problems in the economy, in spite of the headwinds that we had with COVID, in spite of two recessions, you know, so does that tell you that, you know, it's just a question of where are you looking? Uh, are you looking at the uh, at a cup that is half filled or half empty? It's a question of attitude. And we are saying that, look, the opportunities in Nigeria are compelling. There is no better place 
to do business for anybody coming out of, as out of, uh, uh, of, of the continent. I think a number than of Ni Niger Nigerians will be first to admit to, you know, the number of opportunities present in their country. I'm just wondering, though, um, do, isn't this rather late in the day, this marketing of Nigeria? No, well, What's yeah. the game plan? It's, it's, it's not late. It's, it's, what, <coughs> it's, what, it's what governments do, you know, uh, and it's what we've been doing uh, all over the, uh, since we were here. And there's no point, uh, you know, slowing down. You know, uh, we, we, we have the job, we have the responsibility, the opportunities are there. Uh, and, and, and particularly for the time, you know, with the after, the, 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 the largest uh, free trade zone that is coming up in Africa that is already in force is the largest free, uh, free trade zone in the world, 1.3 billion people, you know. So, so we're trying to explain to the world that, look, uh, this largest free zone is happening. It's happening in Africa. Nigeria is at the center of it. Come and do business in Nigeria you know, uh, you do business with Nigerians. And because Nigeria is equidistant in terms of location and because of our relationship with other African countries, you do business with the entire African, African continent. Country. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming on Sunrise Eddy this morning. Mr. Laulua Konde, a senior special assistant to the president in the office of the vice president of media and publicity. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, for coming once again. We have a